Welcome back to another episode of the Creative Commerce Podcast. I'm your host, Jeffrey Scott from jeffreyscottmedia.com, and it's been a while. I've taken a pretty long hiatus from the show working on my personal project, and as I'm recording this, it came out today. It's called Year 4. It's basically a day in the life, day to day of what I have been doing in my last year, year four of college. And I've been making those videos every single year from my freshman year to senior year, year one, two, three, and four. I've got a whole playlist on this YouTube channel if you're watching on YouTube so you can check it out. And it is out now and all of them are complete and done. It's been a great journey progress to work on it and capture all of my years at college and although I didn't really enjoy college at all um, it still was a great experience to capture everything that was going on year to year I mean you know there were things that I enjoyed year to year of course and I captured those things and put it all together in four videos for all four years of things I was doing day to day just like a memory recorded to video so Hopefully I can look back on those and, you know, see myself and I already see myself looking different than I was in year one. So imagine how that would be like 10 or 20 years down the line. On this episode, in the spirit of me graduating college, I'm going to talk about if school is even worth it at all. To some, school is just a waste of money and time, especially to those people who want to focus in different skills or different trades. But to others who need professional schooling and training, such as doctors and lawyers and all those traditional roles, then school is probably extremely important. I'll touch on both sides and just talk about the benefits and negatives that I've personally had from school and just general experiences. But before we get into all of that and the main topic, let's get into the gear update. So it's been a while since I talked about any new gear, but uh, one that came up that was pretty cool to me is the Obspot Tail Air. Apparently it's an AI powered creative tool. And if you're watching this on YouTube, I'll play the video that shows the features and other stuff on the screen now while I'm talking about it. But this new camera sort of looks like a security camera in a way, but it's a moving streaming camera with multi-cam capabilities. It shoots in 4K and has a 1.8 aperture and is meant to be a main camera system, especially helpful for streaming and multi-cam setups. The Tail Air also has an advanced optical system that is comprised of eight high-quality lenses. These lenses work together to produce images that are high in resolution with rich and detailed color accuracy. So where does AI come into play with this? So the Obspot Tail Air has cutting edge AI driven tools for streaming technology that offers a comprehensive range of features to cater to various streaming needs. Its standout feature is the AI auto tracking capability that can track humans, pets, and objects at up to 120 degrees per second without lag. I'm not sure what it means by 120 degrees per second, but I assume that's what it means that it's able to capture and turn automatically so it can capture a 120 degree view at all times. This feature ensures that even fast moving subjects are captured seamlessly and allows simultaneous tracking of multiple subjects, making it ideal for dynamic and complex shooting scenarios. So yeah, you know, based off of what that said, I'm pretty sure it just records 120 degrees at all times and then we'll kind of crop in if it needs to. This feature is the most unique to me because you only need one camera sitting at one angle and you can get like 10 different crops at once. You can just set it up for a wide shot and you can get so many different types of shots and including b-roll and like extreme close-ups and that really struck out to me. So it's kind of like you're making a multi-cam show and you're able to choose the different kinds of shots like b-roll shots or close-up shots, wide shots, and you can kind of piece it all together like a multi-cam setup. The Obspot Tail Air 4K PTZ streaming camera is currently available for $4.99 on their website and on Amazon. And with that, let's get into the Inspiration Insight. On this Inspiration Insight, I want to challenge you to explore astrophotography. This has been something that's been very interesting to me recently, especially with the whole annular lunar eclipse or whatever it's called a few months ago. Um, I got some cool pictures of that. I just basically put my, like, those glasses that you get over the lens of my camera and hey, that worked. But even just shots of the moon or things like that, or if you've got a telescope, just putting literally your lens up on the lens of the telescope, you can get some good pictures that way. Even if you're just taking pictures of the sky, you know, of course, different planets and stuff like that. 
it's just really interesting to see how you can play around with it while editing, especially with the colors with sunsets or sunrises, especially all the different planets, the moon, things like that. All you really need is a decent camera with a long zoom lens, uh, preferably like 100 to 300 millimeter. Aperture typically doesn't really matter for this since, you know, you're zooming in so far and the lighting in space or the sun, you know, it's not going to really impact the aperture, especially with a low aperture. There's no focus or bokeh you're going to get in the background. It's literally a planet or something. You know, there's nothing to get. It's just space. And even so, you're going to need to get rid of a lot of light anyway since you're shooting up into the sky. But it's just going outside on a day that looks pretty and shooting what's above and that would be a pretty cool experience and fun to edit too. You'd be surprised what you can get by just sticking your camera up in the air and getting something there, you know. It's crazy how amazing sunsets, you know, depending on the weather, happens every day. And we get those different views every single day, you know, two times a day, technically, sunrise and sunset. So if it's been a good day, weather's all right, just stick your camera in the sky in the morning or in the evening and get some cool stuff. I got a blurry picture of Jupiter once, but I still thought it was pretty cool and that I was able to physically put my camera onto a telescope and then take a picture of Jupiter. So if you've got a telescope, you know, it doesn't have to be anything good. I mean, as long as you can find something in space, then I think that'd be pretty cool to take pictures of, you know, stars and, and things like that. If you want to share your content and have a chance to be featured on the show, just use hashtag inspiration insight and tag me on your post so I can feature it in the next episode. So now let's get into the main topic on this episode about school. So with school, you know, age old debate of if it's worth it or not to even go. Success means a lot of different things to a lot of different people. And to some success is money or raising a family or maybe even getting good at a particular skill or hobby, things like that. So there's the traditional belief to school, which is getting the degree to be successful in a job that you're going to work. It's the ticket to a job, a higher income, or maybe even societal validation. But in the grand scheme of things, we need to ask ourselves if going the conventional path of college still holds up in a world where success stories are being written like every single day, overnight success stories too. Like, is it really the golden ticket to an outdated relic or pursuit of success? You know, sometimes, you know, it's not really outdated per se, but especially with those traditional roles I mentioned earlier, like doctors and lawyers and things like that, then they'll need those specialized degrees and training. But now that there's so many more careers and opportunities opening up in the modern age and technological age, especially for us creators, it's a conversation that happens more often than it used to. Even the rising cost of college may not even be worth it to many. Like tuition fees have skyrocketed, morphing dreams into financial nightmares for many. The numbers keep climbing, leaving us to wonder if the investment would even give us a return. Because a lot of people get a ton of student loan debts, you know, you know, when they're a kid, they're not in a financial stable place to spend tons of money on tuition, and they're going to accumulate so much debt that they'll have to pay off the rest of their life working a job they may, they may not even enjoy. It's not very attractive anymore to work an office job for every single day for 40 years to pay for student loans you got like years and years ago. And maybe you have a mortgage to pay off too. You got yourself a house, that's on top of it. Car payments, things like that, it all adds up. The promise of a brighter future often comes with a hefty price tag. And also the burden of student loans has become a rite of passage for many graduates. You gotta wonder if it's worth it to accumulate all that debt or are we mortgaging our future for a diploma? I think the successes and the worthiness of college is not really measured in, in money or dollars anymore. It's more a question of financial freedom and the long-term impact on our lives. Nowadays, there's many, many more ways to obtain financial freedom. Being your own boss and doing your own thing is more acceptable and I wouldn't say easier, but more attainable to go ahead and do now than it was in the past. It's probably way more work, and way more risky, but I mean, hey, uh, going the safe way is not always the best way. So I mean, what's the alternative to this? I mean, it's starting to become pretty popular to shift the spotlight from college to trades or skills or even entrepreneurship. Things that would definitely define the conventional and more traditional ways of earning money 
that definitely defy the norm. So now it really opens up many, many doors to success. It's not just a one-way ticket through college to get to get a degree, to get a job. There's many more opportunities now than there was in the past, I think. The idea of success itself is even evolving, with stories of self-made entrepreneurs, skilled craftsmen, and innovators just challenging the technological world and doing their own thing, pretty much, and many without a college degree. I think we're slowly turning into a new era of successful and expanding possibilities to success. Entrepreneurship has a lot of promises of innovation, self-determination, financial freedom, but it also comes with its own risks. Even trades are getting more popular. Trade schools offering hands-on mastery to get into the immediate workforce. Even the gig economy, like freelancing, kind of like our, us as creators, freelancing, doing videography and photography, different skills like that. Those are even more possibilities who want the flexibility and the autonomy to craft or even create their own career. These unconventional routes definitely challenge the traditional narrative, as opposed to going to college, getting a degree, working a job forever. And it begs the question of whether a diploma is the only currency that holds value in the marketplace. It's really up to person to person in their financial state, too, if they really want to take on the loans or if they're fortunate enough to have family that have saved for them and can provide the education without much blowback. So now let's explore more specifically in personal development entrepreneurship. With entrepreneurship and basically just doing your own thing, the narrative is not scripted by traditional norms, but written by those who want to take on the challenge and do the work that 99% of people don't want to do. I mean, why would you want to work up the ladder if you could just own the whole thing? In the universe of entrepreneurship, risk becomes opportunity and challenges transform into stepping stones. This is something that schooling goes against and conditions you to take the safe route, always under somebody else. You need resilience, creativity, and a strong belief in your own abilities. I think personal development intertwines with all of this because with entrepreneurship, it emphasizes not just the acquisition of skills, but the cultivation of a mindset that thrives in uncertainty and risk and not taking the safe way and having to figure out as you go, especially if you're just learning a new skill from scratch. I mean, like I said, life's choices aren't black and white. There's not always just one or two options. And same goes to the decision of pursuing a college degree or opt for alternative paths. You know, same thing. College can be a good move when you're honing specific skills or acquiring specialized knowledge, but at the same time, it opens the door to unconventional paths like taking a gap year for self-discovery, traveling while you're young, or experimental learning outside of the conventional classroom. You know, there isn't a one-size-fits-all like I said earlier. Everyone is different and has different motives in their lives and what success means to them. Many people want something that's safe and stable, which is valid and all right to feel, and something that they can depend on long-term into the future that they can foresee. But there are also people who are motivated by risk, many entrepreneurs and people who want to work on their own. You know, by seeing the risk and what they could build for themselves and the idea of attaining financial freedom and working for it in uncertain kind of gray areas where you can't really foresee anything. You know, some people are driven by that. I mean, going without college could be an easy choice, just deliberately choosing to avoid the financial burdens associated with tuition fees and student loans, housing, all that stuff. So I've been rambling on like a philosopher for a while, but what's my personal idea of this? What's in my personal experiences and opinions? I mean, I've been rambling on to, to make inspirational and clippable clips, so, you know, don't mind me. But through my experience, I'm lucky and fortunate to have a family who could pay for my education and living expenses. So because of that, I went to college since that was their money and it had nothing to do with what I felt about it. I'm not saying I was forced to go to college, but I respected the opportunity that they gave to me and I took it. You know, that was their plan, their money that they saved for, and that's what I was fortunate enough to have that option. I mean, after all, because of the fortunate situation I had, it should just be a net positive in the end by getting a fancy degree, even if I wanted to go or not. For me, and because I freelance, I have always just had some of the skills even coming into college, and I don't think I actually learned much going for what I went for. You know, I got through the stupid basic classes of English and math and all that other junk, but the classes for my major was very basic, I would say. It was just... It was kind of like intro courses. It just went over the surface of everything, especially like my photo and video courses. I mean, after all, to give those classes a break, I, how are you supposed to fit years and years and years of knowledge into like one semester that's only like a couple months long? 
from college, I think the most I personally learned was the social skills and facing moral challenges. I still face these moral challenges even today because of the age and demographic and the environment that I'm in. I learned what kind of people there are out in the world, what people to stay away from, and what bad things that people can do. I also saw what addictions do to people, what vices kids can pick up so early and so on. Socially, I think I'm at a negative <laughs> because of college, but, uh, you know, because I have no friends. But I think that's because of the things college taught me and exposed to me socially that I don't think I would have been able to get to if I just stayed in my bubble back home. If you're the entrepreneurial and business-minded type like me and have the fortunate means to go to college without any financial burdens, I just say take the opportunity. Again, I don't think I would have been exposed to many of the social horrors if I didn't go. I remember many times where I would meet some people in the beginning of the semester and became friends with them, and then I would lose those friends that exact same semester within just like a one or two month period because they just all became alcoholics or they picked up some bad habit that changed them. And unfortunately, it happened to at least probably three or four sets of friends that I've had through my years where college just changed them. I never really found my group. And every time I thought I had, you know, that I mean, they were the nice people they were at first, but then picking stuff up at one of the top quote unquote party schools, you know, just goes down from there. There are probably just as many social lessons you can learn from college as academic lessons, in my opinion. What scares me is that there's many, many people who don't have the self-awareness to just drop people. You know, a lot of people feel like they have to stick around or rekindle something, or maybe there's something there. But you'll meet so many people in college if you go, and even if you don't go to college, you meet so many more people throughout your life within just a semester. I think it also has to do with that they want to be included, and they will change themselves to achieve that goal. It's like that phrase I heard and said on the podcast a while ago um, that I heard somewhere probably scrolling. The five friends that you choose to hang out with, you'll probably become the sixth. Meaning if you like to hang out with five friends who like to drink and party all the time, then you'll probably become the sixth just like them. Instead, if you drop them and find a group who likes to make money, take care of themselves, work out in the gym, you'll probably become the next rich gym bro in the friend group. Of course, behaviors and habits, good or bad, foster on their own and take place differently in many types of different people, but they are for sure accelerated and normalized within a group of people. There's a term for it, I think it's called groupthink, where the group is a hive mind and can only think as a group and not independently of each other. It's kind of like what I said about wanting to be included in a group, to feel secure with a group of people that not only sort of enjoy being around you, but may do certain activities that may mold you in a certain way that isn't conventionally a right thing to do. I would just say stick to your morals, cut people out, and become the person you would want to look up to in the future. I'm of course still figuring this out. Me doing this has led to me having no friends, <laughs> but uh, hey, it's a place to start. The only addiction that I have right now is collecting colognes, and I'm starting to get into watches and stuff like that and suits. I tend to pick up little like hobbies like that sometimes where I just get deep in a rabbit hole and I gotta have the nicest version of that stuff, like cologne and watches, and whatever. Besides the point, but yeah, that's sort of what I'm getting into right now. I definitely want to take some cool photos of my colognes and watches and stuff like that and put it on my Instagram. Just a different kind of photography, probably, even like video stuff. I think that'd be cool to show off. In the next month or two, I'm going to become like a fashion <laughs> Instagram person. <laughs> You're going to see like fit checks of me in my suit and watch and fragrance of the day, you know. Anyway, long ramble and propaganda aside. I don't know if that'd be propaganda, but you know, it's my take, so. Just be aware of yourself, be aware of your inner circle, and be aware of what's important to you and your life plan and what deviates and sticks on that life plan. Also keep up with your morals and stick by it. Also decide if you want to go down the traditional path or make your own. Again, it's really up to you to decide. You know, it's not a one size fits all anymore because, you know, everybody just went to college in the past. I mean, it was way cheaper. I think my dad was telling me that college tuition was like 500 bucks or less for the whole semester and that does not hold true today anywhere. I think as long as you have a good head on your shoulders and you kind of know where you want to go in life, you know, you don't have to know exactly where you want to go, but as long as you stick true to yourself and you don't pick up anything that may 
hurt you or form some sort of addiction, especially if you're young. That's what college is. You know, people change all the time and you're so young, you pick up things quicker than somebody who is older. You know, just stick stick to you and, you know, I feel better than I was trying to please others within a group and me feeling insane and crazy that I had different ideas, but all these other people thought differently and so I just kicked myself out essentially, cut cut them off. You know, I felt better doing that than sticking around. You know, if you're in a place that you're not enjoying or if these friends are not really being friendly and just because of your ideas or your morals and things like that, then those aren't really friends or people you want to stick around with because those bitter people, you know, like I said, you'll become bitter yourself if you hang around that. Just think of just think of the effect that will grow onto you if you stick with that kind of behavior that you don't really want to have in your life anyway. It'll kind of foster inside of you even if it's not originally internalized from you. You know, if it's from an outside source, stick around with it for long enough. Hey, you might pick that up. Hope this was an insightful episode of the podcast to bring back. Hopefully, I'll get back into a better routine of uploading bi-weekly or weekly. Um, All my projects are done. Uh, What I have going for the future is that I'm just staying back home. I'm actually going to be a Taekwondo master at my school here back home, teaching kids, running the business, stuff like that. And that's what I'll be doing full time. You know, it kind of goes against the podcast of me saying, work for yourself, stuff like that. But hey, it's a good gig. You know, I'm basically sort of working for myself. I'm kind of running the place how I think it should be ran and teaching kids Taekwondo. And hey, it's worth it to me and I can still do my stuff on the side. At least I don't have like a nine to five. You know, I I think the latest that I go in is like two or three. So, you know, I got my mornings all to myself. I'm happy about it. And it's been on my mind throughout this whole semester looking forward to it because just wasn't really enjoying college at all, especially not having any friends for the past year or two or something like that. Yeah, have something to look forward to. You know, give yourself something to look forward to. I'm happy to be graduated. Happy to be home. This is what I love to do, martial arts and creating content. Year four just came out. I tell a little bit of a story of um, where I'm at and what I'm thinking about that. So if you're interested, you can read that in the description of year four. Check out year four, years one through four. And yeah, just looking forward to more great stuff. And thanks for watching. You can follow me on Instagram and TikTok at jeffrey.scott underscore for daily clips and highlights. Make sure to follow on Spotify and subscribe on YouTube for episodes. I don't want to say weekly because it might not be weekly right now, but hopefully weekly. I'll see you in the next episode. Thanks for watching.